Welcome to Back Talk. Okay. I'm good. I'm ready to jump right in. Back Talk Podcast. You know, we've been trying to get it together. We here. Let's make it happen. Yes, indeed. So, uh, this shit, this is our first time doing the Skype. Which uh, I know. <laughs> I, I'm. I don't know. I'm. I'm trying to figure it out as we do it. So, uh, basically, um, we we here for for uh fifth show. We don't have uh C Rich here today, unfortunately. Or Jerome. Or Jerome. Uh, both are out of town. They're handling uh business. But uh, we me myself, uh Ray Ban and Lakay, we're, we're here to uh, give y'all a good show today. Still. Yeah. At us, we still gonna make it work. We miss y'all, but we'll make it work. <laughs> Absolutely, shout out to the family. And oh, um, you know, before we jump in, Raven, mm-hmm. I just realized we are on our fifth episode, and we have yet to shout out somebody that's like really important to the operation. We they, they don't see her face, they never really hear her voice. But I just want to send a shout out to our camera girl. She'll remain nameless for right now. I don't know if she wants her stuff in the streets like that. But <laughs> she's like super dope. She's like our camera person slash production assistant slash hair my stylist. hair stylist. <laughs> right. And um, you know, I just want to give her a shout out because you know, she does a lot and we've never really acknowledged her on Absolutely. air. So yeah, yeah, she know uh, Brianna Cherie. Y'all can check her out. Uh, <laughs> you know she does hair. Uh, she she does camera work. She does every. <laughs> she's basically everything to the operation, along with Lakay. So, you know we got we got you know ladies leading the charge behind the scenes here. You know I'm just right. a talking piece. I'm just a, I'm just a, a talent on air. I don't do much uh, outside of that. You know, they, they, pretty, <laughs> they pretty much hold everything down but uh but yeah definitely shout out to brianna thank you for your contributions you know back talk back talk all day <laughs> and um yeah so i mean you, you know Kay, you usually open it up with a with some lyrics i don't know if you have some this time i'm ready bro oh okay okay <laughs> let, 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 let's go Shapeless, formless, heart is enormous. Um, I've borne this, I've worn this. No, never what the norm is. Come here, this is fearless. Contrast and color, wisdom's a woman. Listen and love her. Who said it? Uh, See? Thank you to LeKay for <laughs> dropping words that nobody actually listens to. That sounds like maybe it could be to something from Floetry. No, it's, we still keep it rap right now or hip hop now. Usually, Raven sitting next to me, he can peep at my phone and cheat, but we in two different locations, so you really got to figure it out today. No, I don't never cheat. Like, I've never cheated on I- one of these, so. I mean, you, the first show you did Jay-Z, so I know that off rip. Another show you did Benny Siegel, I know that off rip. I don't know this one. So, yeah, I, I'm going to let you have that. Shout out to Niles Barkley. Those who don't know, the really? duo that includes CeeLo and the producer. Sorry, I got his name right now. <laughs> right. Muse. So, Is it Muse or Mouse? Muse? Mouse? No. We're going to call him the Muse Mouse. Okay. So... <laughs> Go go gadget gospel, but no, I've been on my Niles Barkley this week, and like that was one of my favorite albums back in college. Shout out to UCF. So um, I just wanted to bring a little Niles Barkley to it. So those of you who haven't checked it out, it's a great album. That's, so that's Danger. On. That's the, by the way, the producer. I, I feel ashamed. Is Danger Mouse? That's that's Danger Mouse. Yes. Oh Lord, I yeah, really I know, suck. <laughs> I really feel bad now. Like he worked with MF Doom. That's one of my favorite. Danger Doom is one of my favorite duos. So it's crazy. I didn't oh. even. Yeah, I'm tripping. Slacking. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, yeah, we here. Uh, and you know, they so, know we here, right, man? You just said it like three I times. I know, right? I, I'm. A, <laughs> I mean, I I have to trick myself mentally, like we here, because we not physically in the same. Right, he like yeah. no, really, we here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I know who who else is here, and he here for the bullshit. Uh, shout out to my man, uh, Charlemagne the God, for holding it down. Yes. You know, a lot of times, you know, with Charlemagne, I I have mixed, I, I not necessarily mixed feelings about him, but. 
because I, I kind of see what he's doing. I get the game. I understand what he's doing. You know, because he spoke at length, uh, especially you know when he was on his book tour, where he has been on his book tour. He kind of dropped. Yeah, yeah. He he uh, he's dropped a lot of jewels here and there, especially as to his upbringing. So he grew up in a whole, you know, I guess you can say, black power, you know, mindset, and he has a lot of knowledge. You feel me? And I think people look at, you know. What he does on the, on the platform with Breakfast Club and what he did, especially what he used to do with Wendy Williams, and we automatically have or make the assumption that, you know, he's kind of, I guess more or less you can say he's kind of coonish. Well, so before you, before you jump into that, I don't uh-huh. know if people know what you talk about. So tell the people what you're talking about, why you having to break down who he is. Well, I mean, Charlemagne just recently, and I, I was gonna get into it. Let me, let me, let me bring the people into it. I'm gonna bring them in, but basically, Charlemagne um, on the Breakfast Club this week, he had Donkey today for uh, Christine uh, Leahy, who is a Fox News sports reporter, Fox Sports reporter. Uh, she recently had an issue of uh, with with the brother Levar Ball, who we seem to talk about every week now. Uh, he's he's, he's staying right <laughs> he's staying the headlines and, and they helping him while at the same time I think they you know the media is putting him in front of cameras because they know he got a hot mic and you know whatever he say is gonna be crazy because he just fly off the whim and then sometimes you know he'll reel it back in and say some real stuff so I you know even with him it's kind of mixed you know what I'm saying but I, I think what they trying to do with him they want to they they really want to because of his stance of you know, going against the grain and going against establishment as far as business goes, they want to try to they want to try to sink him with with his words because they know he's gonna say something crazy. He says crazy stuff, and just recently, you know, he had a little a little another uh, incident with Kyrie Irving. We won't get into that right now, but basically, That's Kristen, funny. yeah, <laughs> uh, Kristen Leahy basically uh, stated that. Uh, LeVar Ball's son Lonzo seemed afraid and all his sons were forced to play basketball they don't think for themselves type you know kind of going into a little tirade about his parenting and whatnot you know and so LeVar buzzed back LeVar wasn't really (laughs) having that shit so you know he he (laughs) (laughs) and, and you know he told her straight flat out stay in your lane you feel me Literally. like stay in your lane. Don't worry about Wait, but about let the people know before he told her that he said, I don't address her. Before he even right. like said <laughs> I won't even address her. her. Right. He's talking to the other host, which was a guy, because basically for those of you who haven't seen the setup, it's like a yeah. studio and it's kind of weird and Charlamagne touched on it. It's a studio, but it's him and the male host present in the same room, but then Kristen Leahy's like literally in the back corner awesome. on a monitor or something. So like he literally had to turn like around to acknowledge her. Right. So he already was like facing forward, like I don't, I don't talk to her. That's she scared me. I don't talk to her. So I'm like, he literally had to turn around and be like, "Hey, bro, I ain't trying to talk to you. Stay in your lane." <laughs> yeah. By the way, I'm sorry, Cal. Colin Cowherd, uh, I, I don't fuck with him, but that that's the name of the show. He used to be on ESPN as well. Uh, he said some slick shit about black folks. I I remember what he said about John Wall, uh, the point guard for Washington Wizards, basically you know criticizing him, saying he would be a better player or he would be a different player if he had a father in his life. That was some slick ass shit he said. And wow. a lot of people got on him and, you know, ESPN kind of let him slide. I think they suspended him for a day or something like that. But really? he, he said, yeah, he, he said he's a little uh, undercover white supremacist, too. <laughs> so I, uh, not all of them. I, I won't go as far as say all. Sure. But, I'm sorry. Yeah, not all of them. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> damn, I thought I'm the one who would be banging. <laughs> but no, nah, um. Yeah, so Colin, and it fit, it's befitting. So you have Colin Cowherd, this person who has a questionable background. You have Christian Leahy, who said some very disrespectful things in in regards to Lonzo uh, and LeVar. So Charlemagne, he was breaking down Charlemagne and like who he is, basically. And people were kind of, I think, trying to demonize him for how he responded. And then he was... Um, <clears throat> 
Charlemagne basically had, had some strong feelings about how uh, Jason Whitlock um, defended Christine Leahy. So he did, we just told you about Christine Leahy. He gave you some background on Jason Whitlock. So, Rayman, what was it that Charlemagne said that you agree or disagree with? I mean, I don't think there's anything that he said that I disagree with. Basically, he went in on Jason Whitlock being, you know, a puppet for, for the white supremacists he worked for. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it is what it is. Like, we, we, if you follow sports, you know what it is with Jason Whitlock. He's put on the forefront to say disrespectful shit about black folks, just like Stephen A. Smith. And I would even go as far as say I give more respect, a little bit more respect for Stephen A., on the simple fact that there are times when he actually will speak up against white folks doing, you know, an in, in injustice in this country at times. But uh-huh. you know, we know what he's there for as well. He's there to be Jason Whitlock light, you know, with, and, you know, I mean, it is what it is. We, we expect this. It's nothing new. Well, one thing that I agree with, um, basically people, including Christine herself, um, were like, oh my God, when he made the comparison of like the white woman falsely ac- accusing Emmett um, Till. Right. And we all know how that ended. And people thought it was so drastic, but I thought Charlamagne did a great job. And if you guys haven't heard his, you know, donkey of the day, definitely put it up on YouTube. But he basically was like, white women and this history of weaponizing their whiteness it's right. like you was in one situation with the person that he literally is trying to you know he's telling you like leave me alone like don't talk to me don't look at me right. you know like i'm trying to stay over here and then you have the I thought it was in, not the inter- i'm sorry to interject but i thought it was brilliant the way he did it he said i'm scared of you like right yeah and i'm scared we are- <laughs> <laughs> right we all knew what that meant and you know she's like are you threatening me because when he said you'll get dealt with see that's when you have to put stuff in that context mm-hmm. now maybe he did mean the dealt with that she took no, it as no, in our did community not. we didn't that's not what we heard because we know what that sounds like when you say dealt with you mean like you know maybe your karma maybe you're going to be addressed it doesn't mean you're going to be ob- like maybe harmed but it right. depends on the scenario. So for her to just like jump from literally a uh, interview in a professional platform to ask this man in front of millions of people, are you threatening me? It's just like she sounded this alarm and it's just reminiscent of like so much shit that has happened with white women and black men, you know? So it just kind of struck a chord for me and I completely got it. And I'm proud of Charlemagne for, you know, um, playing that out. Yeah, I mean, you know, just like just like he said, man, you know, this is this is nothing new. This is something where white women will jump on the the victimhood role. They will not not just white women, white men too. They want to find a way if they know you they're doing you wrong, they're going to find a way to become the victims in the situation. That privilege. That's just what it is. So they're going to flip it on you no matter what. She it, she was prying at him, poking at him to try to get him to say something where she can start playing victim and she got it. You know she what I'm saying? She flipped it. it into a way. Ain't, ain't nobody think he's that man. You, you really think he's going to get on TV and say he's going to do something violent to another woman? Like, come on. That, that's, right. That, it's so far beyond the pale, but that's just how the, the type of tricks in the games that they play. You know, it's you got to be strategic. You got to know when you're going in a situation like that. I wouldn't even tell people to really go into a situation like that, you know, because they, all they're going to do is try to flip it. You already know what they're on. You know, it's so, a setup, right? Yeah, it's a setup from the jump. So I wouldn't even suggest him to go on those type of platforms. But if you're going to go on there, you got to. I think he played it well, though, with the I'm scared part. That I, I feel like he played it off well. <laughs> but, um,. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, with LeVar, it's back and forth. Like I said, you know, I support him overall. I feel like sometimes he do need to shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> there are times where he, he put his foot in the mouth like this shit with Kyrie Irving. He said, you know, he shouldn't speak on his sons and how they come up. Basically, Kyrie was, you know, kind of telling him to lay lay low, you know, kind of lay back on his kids, let them kind of grow into their own man. And, you know, he didn't take well to that because, you know, you telling somebody else how they're paying their kids. I understand that, you know, that's that's a touchy thing. But, you know, right. for you to come back and say, well, you can't really speak on it, not just because you don't have kids. That's, you know, whatever. But to say you ain't grow up with your mother, like. And his mother died when he was four. Like, you know, it's shit like that. You know, you got to kind of, like, 
LeVar, bro, like, that's your homie. You got to pull, like, bro, like, shut the fuck up. Like, you, you know, <laughs> you're going too far, bro. We, yeah. You don't have a filter. He coming yeah, in, he, he probably feels like he got himself and his sons to this point. I'm sure we've heard about his antics and how he really is just unapologetic. And I think he's just staying true to brand. He's unapologetic. Mm -hmm. He says what he wants. He does what he feels. And uh, I get it. I completely get it. They always wish I'm not a big fan of filtering people. I get you got to play the game or so they think you got to play the game to get on certain platforms and excel to certain levels. But I always have appreciation and love for the rebel. And to me, he's a rebel of sorts. Like he does not care about what he should and should not be doing, but you can tell he has sense. So like you said, he gives you just enough of the trash talk and just enough of the reminders that, I can get crazy, but I got sense and I know what I'm doing, you know? True. True indeed. So, yeah, I thought that was really, really interesting. Like, we thought it was going to be like a dry week and then what, like Wednesday, Thursday hit and everything started happening. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's still, you know, it's been kind of slow motion other than, you know, kind of watching some of this shit unfold with uh, Tretch and uh, uh, WAC 100 over in L.A. They, you know, they've been having... They don't whack just like go at it with somebody else goes at everybody yeah i mean he whack 100 is seeking attention what he's trying to do is become a name like i haven't really seen whack 100 with with the game recently it seemed like and, and actually whack is a truck driver and he's a lot of his videos i've been seeing he's been driving trucks the whole time so i don't even know if he's still <laughs> like in the in, in the music no nah, real talk i don't even know if he's still in the music industry like if he's still doing anything but it, I think he's trying to get cracking. I think he's trying to become a name so he can kind of flip that and make some money off of that. So probably into like a reality show or some shit. But basically, he he been doing a lot of wolfing, you know. So I, you know, it is what it is, you know. But speaking on, you know, speaking on the dead man, and, and regardless, like, and this would be just my little thing on it because I don't want to really touch on it too much, you know. At the end of the day, what a man says is his opinion, whatever. You know, speaking on a dead man is one thing. Speaking on his mother in a disrespectful manner, you know, you you kind of you stepping out there, and I, I see why. I don't it. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I'm more so disappointed in the people who so called called a you know pot kid their homie, and they ain't really doing much. Like I kind of look at that side, but I think at the same time, a lot of them people they ain't really trying to be online with it. And I seen a lot of people, you know, people like Napoleon, the rapper Napoleon's brother. Uh, who used to be with um, Pac, you know, they kind of wanted to shoot that fade, and he been dodging them for a long time. He been dodging G Principal. I, I, I'm I'm talking over some people's heads because you don't really know, like, what's some shit like that. Head, I know. Like, <laughs> these are, these are, hey, bro, hey, I'm heavy in, I, you were swam from the West because I, I, I just be on it like that. There but. you go. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, I want to lose the people, man. Basically, uh, shout out, shout out to it's Trent. Shout so out deep. to he can't Hopefully. help me, y'all. He be doing the backstory, the side <laughs> story. He can't help me, y'all. I'm a storyteller, goddamn it. But uh, <laughs> shout out to Trash. Shout out to uh, shout out to Whack One Hundred. Even though he's doing some bullshit, I hope the brothers can come together, man. Get some resolution on it. Uh, speaking Whatever. of resolutions, <laughs> what what's this shit about somebody suing? A woman after a failed first date. What what is this shit? Because you brought it to me. I don't even know nothing about it. <laughs> so actually, when I was looking around for like hot topics and just stuff that's been going on, I think he was even like a donkey of the day. Shout out to Charlamagne again, but. I just scrolled past it. I didn't even give enough attention to see what the details were, but it just got me to thinking because, you know, I'm out here, I'm single, I'm trying to, you know, move and mingle and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I sued every man that I had a bad first date with, or if that was like really a thing, like, do you know how like caked up I would be right now? Like, and then I was just, you know, it was just like a thought thing for me, like, who does this and like why who would even like make that a case so it's not like what what exactly happened though because i I need to know details 
that's what I'm saying. I'm telling you, I didn't read the article. I'm saying oh. I saw the headline, and the headline just got me to thinking, like, dang, if, if that could really be a thing, like, to two people on first dates, like, who does that? Like, is the whole purpose of a date to, you know, test the water, see how it goes, and we all know it's a 50-50? Like, who does that? So, it was more so just something I thought was interesting and wanting to get your input about, like, if you could sue somebody because of a bad first date, would you do it? Um, no. Like, why, why would I waste my time? Like, first of all, what are you losing? What are, unless you done took somebody to, uh, what's the shit, Ruth, Ruth Christopher's or some shit? Like, Ruth Chris. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unless you took them to Ruth Chris, then like, what what, what are you really suing for? You What, you went to Wendy's and you bought her two meals instead of one? Eight to Wendy's, okay. bro. What you mean? Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean a first shit. date, that's fancy. A fir- wing stop <laughs> is fancy for a first date. Well, what's not, what's regular for a first date? I mean, shit. Te- uh, Taco Mac. <laughs> Taco Mac. <laughs> is better than Wendy's. What are you talking about? <laughs> if Wendy's is fancy, Taco Mac is base. You know what? We're not even going to do yeah, this. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> but basically, because uh, I just looked it up. So basically, um, uh, the man is saying he's suing a woman for texting during the first date. Oh, men are being exploited by people like the defendant. That was his statement. Oh, I can't. So basically, she she got a free meal out of him, and he was mad because he was just she was Probably just on her, her yeah on her phone all night all night. Shit happens, whatever, go on another date. That's how I feel. And that's that. I just want to know what you thought. It was more of a look at this crap headline. Like, this is crazy. That's it. This nigga is banging over $21. I just read it. The movie ticket was 17 The pizza <laughs> was 4 This nigga really is banging over $21. I can't believe this. It's amazing what a man with hurt pride will do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right so anyway something that i love every time this year was coming up the bt awards and i hear a lot of people talk you know smack about bt and their content and you know the company and what they represent but i feel like they've done a great job in the past few years of you know the content that they present and just representing us better and etc cetera, etc cetera. fast forward they released their nominees for the 2017 BET Awards, mm-hmm. and there was a little bit of like a uproar because Cardi B, um, we all know her from Love and Hip Hop New York, right. um, she got a nomination for Best Female Hip Hop Artist and, and Best I, New Artist and Best New Artist. Don't get it twisted. Really? Okay. Don't so, ever get it twisted. <laughs> right. Uh, but I just was like, wow, like. I don't know why people are so mad because to me, I'm going to say I love that she's nominated because she she really hustled the game and like you know what is hip hop about like grinding, hustling, speaking on your art, speaking on your life. Her music isn't like stellar but I can bounce to it it's good you know it seems authentic she's not rapping about nothing I feel like she doesn't know and I feel like she deserves it now people in the category with her for best fe- female hip hop artists include Missy Elliott okay. Nicki Minaj, Remy mm-hmm. and Young and May now should she win against Hell those yeah people? she should win who, the, who else gonna win wait what who else is gonna win first of all Young, what Young has May- Nicki Minaj done this year well, or last year to to justify winning, so we don't scratch that. She just did meat meal. That's okay. all she said. <laughs> uh, young young MA, I can kind of see had a like, hell of a year. She was cool. Like, well, all right, but what did she really follow up? She didn't really drop a project that you can jump behind and say this is her landmark. Like, this is her making a statement in the game. She didn't really drop nothing outside but she of those two singles. Made a- she herself made a statement in the game like it's groundbreaking that she's like the first openly gay clearly masculine mm. female to reach starting so yeah her she may not have had a project that's like kaboom but just her being on the scene and having a hit song was like her kaboom like that was a huge thing you get what I'm saying mm. I, you I, I guess I mean I guess that don't count for nothing no I guess I mean I, I can uh, yeah I get it. Like, I guess I'm speaking more to the culture and you're speaking more to the music, right? 
Right. But I mean, also on top of that, like, you know, no, the culture and the music can be, they're, they're some synonymous at times. So I'm not going to say they're going to be separated. I'm going to say, you know, yes, what you said is correct. But, you know, for somebody who, you know, has such a big single, to not really follow it up with nothing, she kind of she dropped the ball. I feel like she dropped the ball last year. Like she really should have, yeah, she should have capitalized on that and dropped something, some real heat, like a full project, and really, you know, had people waiting for this year's project. But she didn't really do much, so I can't say that she's the best new female artist. I can say she had the one of the best rap songs, but I can't say she's best new female. I mean, best female artist. Like, I can't say that. If we gonna go that route, then <clears throat> about like who made an impact, I would say then Remy Ma is probably equal. But right. I wouldn't even give it to her. Like, I I, I won't give it to Remy. <laughs> I wouldn't give it to Nikki. I would probably give it to Cardi B. Honestly, she grinded. She hustled from the bottom. Like, ain't nobody behind her. She didn't have no back. Like, I mean, yeah, she has a backing now, but. You know, she really got it out the dirt. Like she, she wasn't she got nobody before she had a right. machine behind her. Yeah. Right. So she was. She she went. She did it on her own. So I, I salute her, man. She should win every fucking award she get nominated for. I respect the fact that That's she's surprising. real about. Nah, she. Nah, it, the thing is, bro. Like people, she's real about what she is, who she is. She don't. You know, she ain't flexing on the gram and shit. She is who she is. She. And she really says a lot of deep shit and has very good a good message for women and I, I respect that. So, I mean, regardless of how you get your money, like I know people will say, Oh, you know, but how she a stripper, how she how you gonna respect? Nah, like just cause you a stripper, that don't mean shit. Like, I respect the hustle. I respect, you know, she doing what she gotta do. I'm not saying, you know, it's the best career choice, but you know, shit, ain't nobody, you ain't, y'all niggas ain't offering opportunities, y'all black folks ain't got no, you know, y'all ain't got no businesses to be giving folks jobs, so, you know, she gotta have okay. to live. Let me, okay, go ahead. Would you be a stripper, Kay? Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Where did that come from? We talk about BT 2017, we only on category <laughs> one. We ain't talking about my aspirations, okay? Okay. So, best male hip hop artist. We got Big Sean, Chance. But you didn't rapper. pick. You didn't pick the best female. I'm gonna need you to pick one. If I had to pick one, <laughs> you know what? I love the underdog story. So I'm sorry. I think I gotta give it to Remy. Hmm. Okay. I, I love can't Remy. Do I've been rocking Remy since, you know, I've mentioned it on previous shows, like her first, maybe even only solo album. And I love how she came back and like rebranded herself. Like I loved her hustle. And yeah, Cardi B, she got it in, like you said. But I guess if I was 25, I'd say Cardi B. But since I'm a little bit older than that, I'm going to have to go with my girl Remy. <laughs> okay. I mean, I can respect that pick. I ain't, you know, I ain't going to argue one way or another with that. that <laughs> <laughs> Best new, best. I keep saying new shit, but best male hip hop artist. Who who you got for that category? I don't know. So for the listeners, it's Big Sean, Chance the Rapper, Drake, Future, J Cole, and Kendrick Lamar. Mm. I don't think I've ever seen such a tight category. At really? least not in the last few years. Really? Like Big Sean's most recent oh, release. God. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Big Sean, we talked about Big Sean's album the week it dropped. He, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it did kind of dial for me, I'm not going to lie, but I felt it. Like, it made an impact. He mm -hmm. was lackluster with the song with Eminem, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Chance the Rapper brought back Black Boy Joy and had a Kit Kat commercial. Like, they're, like it's crazy, like, the impact in the year that he's had. And he's co-signed by the Carter, so he's, like, automatic golden ticket boy. Drake, I mean... He's just consistent, and I can't mm. say he's wowed me lately, but you got to give it to somebody that can be, like, I think I just saw an article about him always having a, a song on, like, a top 100 for, like, the wow. past, basically his whole career. So you got to give it to his, his consistency. Run is ridiculous, bro. His run right. is really ridiculous. Like, I'm, like, seriously, like, it, it's crazy, and we haven't gotten tired of him. Well, except for C. Rich. C. Rich don't like him, but, you know. <laughs> Shout out to C. Um... Right. Uh, if he was here right now, he'd be slumped back in his chair like I ain't talking <laughs> about this shit. <laughs> so, um, 
So that's Drake. Future has been popping. He got to give it to him. Like, ever since that song with Rihanna, like, the dude just went into the stratosphere. Like, he's been doing his thing. Can't get mad at that. I, he started a whole culture of damn mumble rap. Like, you can't get mad at that. Um, J. Cole, his most recent project, um, he gave us, you know, woke you know, J. Cole, you know, it was cool. It's, it's, it I was being I think Charlamagne rotation. said it was vacuuming the house music or some shit. <laughs> that shit had me rolling. I think it was Charlamagne who said he made vacuum the house music or some shit. Oh my That's God. Kind of <laughs> I can't. But it kind of, it kind of fit. That don't make it bad. It's just, it, it kind of fit. I mean, that album kind of did. Vacuuming the house. So music you play while you vacuum the yeah. house. I can't. <laughs> And then, now, before, wait, wait, wait. Before you get into Kendrick, okay, is the, okay. Does this include his new album? Is this is this nomination yeah. include damn? Yeah. Okay, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. I just had to clarify that. Yeah, I think I forget the official time span, but I know it's like sometime like mid last year up to this mm-hmm. year. But um, so K Dot, Kung Fu Kenny, Kendrick, motherfucking Lamar, mm-hmm. like. That's all I gotta say. Like Kendrick, motherfucking Lamar. So we see, but but we we see where you're coming (laughs) from for this. So I'm gonna run down that list one more. So with Big Sean, I I gotta cancel Big Sean out. Uh, Off rip, just for for respect to hip hop, the nigga didn't answer back. I know it ain't no time limit for you to answer back, so I'm not going to... Work to Nicki Minaj. And, and he, 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 you know, I, I felt like Big Sean jumped out the window with this and, you know, for no reason, really. This nigga still hurt from control, so I, I, I can't give it to Big Sean. And on top of that, the album, it, it was... It was cool. Like I liked the album when I first heard it, the one the one run through, but I haven't really wanted to go back to it and it kinda So it ain't stick with you yeah, like it me. ain't stick with me like that. And I feel like, you know, in today's music culture, we do have to give this music more time. You know what I'm saying? Definitely wanna definitely wanna sit with it longer. Like I, I can't I can't say nowadays that anything is classic. I gotta give everything at least five years. If I feel like I can play it five years from now, then it'll be cool. I don't have no instant classics right now. But uh Big Sean, his album was cool. I can't give him be- uh best hip hop artist, especially over somebody like Drake, Kendrick, Cole or Chance. Futures off off rip futures out of the list for me. I feel like he's kinda He's stagnant. Like he, he's just really making the same little music. He's not really doing anything. What's that? He, one may call it stagnant, but somebody else may say that's consistent. Consistent? No, nah, I feel like consistent is you're making the uh, high quality music consistently. He's not really changing anything, and it's not really like it's just throwing the car music, throwing the club music, but it ain't really. It's not quality music to me. Like. Honestly, how much can you keep rapping about double cupping? Like, I, I, I can't, I can't tolerate the shit. Like, okay. I don't, I don't do it. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't sit with me like that. So, you know, future is out for me. You know, and I'm, one, I'm somebody who champion. I, you ask my homies. Like, I, I listen to Future last year. I, I felt like Dirty Sprite, the album was was. I felt like that was one of his probably his best work. Especially up until like I feel like he did a good little series. He had Monster, he had Beast, he had uh what, what's the other shit? Uh what's the shit with uh Okay, you just yeah, I guess you ain't no future fan, so I <laughs> I'm gonna move on. But he had a good little run but I feel like, you know, at this point it's kinda like whatever, whenever he drops something. Uh Drake. Drake, he he made a he made a decent album. I I I don't you know it is what it is. He made like a, a all welcoming album, and I, I'm really not feeling Drake right now. I, I feel like he need to re-energize. He need to find a new production team, something, or get with Forty and just lock in the room with Forty and do a whole album with him and you know him Forty and whoever writing. And let them, you know, come together and what you mean? And let them come together and make a classic. God damn it! Uh, all chance. right, it, it, all right. Let me cut to the chase. If I'm gonna pick between two people, and shout out to J Cole, I love J Cole. The album was cool. It's not another album I ain't really go back to yet, but I feel like even with J Cole stuff, 
I will go back to that before I go back to the Big Sean album. Kendrick, it's really between Kendrick and Chance. And if I'm going to be objective, though I feel like Kendrick was rapping his ass off, I wasn't really feeling the album. Feeling. I feel like he was he was rapping his ass off, but I wasn't feeling the album like I usually do. There was a few songs where it was like, okay, I'm really feeling this shit, but then some of it was like, eh, I'm not too crazy about the message. If I'm going to go with the if I'm going to go with somebody, I'm going to say Chance only because he tore the fucking game up. Did shit that I ain't seen nobody else do independently. Been on like SNL. He kills every performance, live performance. Like the dude is ridiculously talented. I feel like on a rap level, as far as verse for verse, he up there with Kendrick as far as lyrical ability. Like he be saying some shit. So I give it to him. I go ahead and give it the chance just off the, the strength that he doing some crazy shit without having major backing like Kendrick or, or Drake. I give it to him. But I feel you. So for best female, you got Cardi B. And for best male, you got Chance the Rapper. And for me, for best male hip-hop artist, of course, is Kendrick Lamar. And for me, for best female hip-hop it's my girl, Remy Ma, Reminisce. So, of course, there's, like, a bunch of other categories. We won't have time to go through all of them. But, I mean, I thought it was worth discussing because it's tight. Like, this, I didn't watch the awards last year only because I was mad because I wasn't there. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to watch this year just to see who wins. I feel like there's so much, like, artistry happening right now and, you know, so much music out. So, I can't wait to see, like, the surprise performances and... Things like that So I think Shout out to BT Awards is going to be Extra lit this year Yeah I mean There ain't no losers In this situation I, I feel like everybody You know A lot of the nominees This year I can say Okay they really deserve it and If I can side note For a moment There's really no Is there really like When it comes to Best group Is there really a, a Question that the Migos Got to win When it comes to Best male pop Artist Or R&B artist Is there really any question That Bruno Mars Got to win I feel like this the the one that I really want to see because it's gonna tell me a lot. Best female R and B and pop artist. I kind of want to see who win that, only because I would pick Solange out of the whole group. If we talking quality of music, I would pick Solange. I, I like that album more than any other album from the group. I can you see if Rihanna Solange? win it. Hmm. You listen to um Solange's album? Hell yeah! I play that <laughs> shit every morning. No, you when don't. it drop, okay. When it drop, I play that shit every. You can ask anybody who used to work with me at this unknown place. I ain't gonna say the name. <laughs> I used to play that shit every morning. I still go back to it here and there. Like I love uh, uh, Mad with Lil Wayne. I feel like that's his best work I over the last three, Bob. four years with him and yeah. with her and Wayne. I feel like Fubu is ridiculous. I like. I like that whole album. Come on now, you you talk. Oh, look who you talking to. Oh, I love that album. That's <laughs> right. my favorite R and B album of the last. I don't know how long. Couple years. Oh shit! You really yeah. feel the way about I it. Fuck okay. that. I fuck with that album. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm a big Kaylani fan. Um, MJB. Mm. Hmm. Nah. I don't really know if I give it to her, but I'm happy that she' about to give us. Uh, you know, he, um, Beyonce, I mean, what do you say about the queen? I kind of um, just want Rihanna to get it because Rihanna mm -hmm. didn't get recognized anywhere else for her last album. And it was fucking great. It was. But look at you. Oh, R&B loving ass. <laughs> I'm just like. I love R&B more than I love hip hop. What? Not the guy that's been a hip hop head since he was five. Yeah, but I've been listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire and goddamn Isley Brothers longer. So since you was two, <laughs> you goddamn right. So I mean, I've been listening. To, I mean, I wouldn't say love it more. I love hip hop. You know, on the same level. Yeah, you go. So you know. So yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I don't really know who has it, but I'm, that's another great category. I just. I don't know. I want B to, but you know, B not gonna be there because she's gonna have brand new babies by the time the awards air. And she's babies. not gonna be there to accept. She's pregnant with twins. What twins? They gonna have a boy, two boys, or it's a boy and a girl? 
they haven't said, but people feel like it may be one of each. But either way, she's not going to be at the awards. At least I highly doubt it because she's going to be healing and getting ready for her next mm. crazy-ass tour that's going to take all our money. I so. pray for Jay-Z said he has two boys. What you mean? He got, One of them, you know how to rule of thumb now. One of them is going to not be as good as Jay. And they got to <laughs> rap. One of the two got to rap, God damn it. It ain't. No, they can't no. just go and be a business. One of them got to be an artist. The other one probably no, gonna no. be a Snoop, business mogul. None of Snoop's sons rap, at least not that I've heard. So nah, every great of. rapper doesn't have to have a rapper son. But I feel like with Jay Z now, come on now, that that's Jay, that's Hove. He gotta have one to come right. and take the take the throne. You gotta have You're right. one. You right? I the hope Jay-Z they have at least ten Jay-Z. more kids. Oh no, nah, I ain't sell that. But the Jay Z fan in me would not mind seeing a reincarnated J two point You never know. That may be kinda dope. But we gotta wait a whole nother damn fifteen years at least to see what that comes. So by that time I don't probably don't even care. But shout out to Miss Beyonce and her um twins that are coming soon. So we'll see who wins it. I don't know, but can't wait to watch. Absolutely, I I can. I always watch the run the run back. I don't ever catch it live. So this year you will. He will. <laughs> I'm gonna make him watch okay. it. I mean, I'd rather watch something you know more more you know mentally stimulating. Oh, you know Lord. what I'm saying? Here we go. I'll probably Every jump into. Gotta be in <laughs> I gotta jump into <laughs> like I I I'll go and watch like the Young Turks here and there and. Uh-huh. You know, they be touching on politics, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I listen to it a lot. You know, I've been listening to politics and, you know, the the breakdowns and how, you know, the ins and outs. Can, we, keep was, it? can, we, can, we, can we bring it on back? We can bring it back. <laughs> but, so, we let, let's let's talk about something else because I don't even want to talk about Trump no more. I thought I was going to want to talk about it. don't. About. I'm over the yeah, cheetah. I, I don't. So, we can talk about. Escape. <laughs> wow I'm just kidding We can talk about it later Go ahead Yeah we're gonna talk about it later We're gonna wrap We're gonna end it With the music conversation But let's jump into Feminist Jones uh, Yeah And, and, and I'll allow you I'll, I'll kind of allow you To elaborate On what exactly happened With this With this situation Cause I, I don't follow the sister I hesitate to call her sister uh, but go ahead. I, I I'll let you jump into it. Go ahead. Oh my gosh! So Feminista Jones. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her. To be honest, I don't know her complete backstory, but she's always been someone who I saw as a quote unquote figure um, on Twitter. One of the people who were always like shaping conversations and had strong opinions about things. Um, as her name suggests, people you would consider her a feminist. She's very unapologetic. She's a statuesque um, black intelligent woman and um you know she writes and she you know um is from new york city and she's just really like has a place i would say in quote-unquote black twitter and Mm. i would say more than black twitter but usually just well i would say black twitter go ahead (laughs) so most most recently like one of her like tweet interactions went viral and that's happened before because she's always having like interesting exchanges but just to make it brief um she was tweeting different females about sorry not females women about um how some men get mad when you agree with their compliment and i thought it was a very interesting conversation apparently the conversation kind of picked up on Twitter and then like major platforms like BuzzFeed, Cosmo, like all these platforms just like, um, published a story about it. And I'm like, wow, is this really a thing? But then I was like, okay, I'm going to talk to Ray-Ban about this because I have experienced that. Like if a guy's like, Oh, what's up? You know, you look real nice today. Mm -hmm. If you say, Oh, I know. Or if you say, yeah, I do. And you're not even think about it. Like a dude will have a problem with that. Like, how dare you know this before I told you? Like, it's really a thing where guys are like, no, you're supposed to, you know, be meek and not acknowledge things until I tell you about them. So if I tell you, you got a nice pair of legs, you can't say, oh, yes, I do. You have to say, oh, thank you. As if I'm enlightened. And basically her thing was, 
you know, she's not trying to be like snarky or rude. It's just, why would you even have a problem with me having confidence in whatever you're complimenting prior to you finding it necessary to compliment me? So I just thought it was a great conversation piece. And it was interesting to see how some men were responding and some women even had like threads of text messages of guys that were literally getting like irate at the fact mm-hmm. that a woman could be confident about something before he told her. So I just wanted to know what you thought about it. All right, look. So, Feminista Jones. Feminista. Uh, Feminista Jones. Feminista. Feminista Jones. <laughs> Such a ass. You did. <laughs> she basically, and I, I don't want to jump into all her history. I'll just say she has a, she's known for her disdain and kind of disrespect of black men. I'll just go as far as to say that. Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't subscribe and I don't I don't think any sisters sub- subscribe to uh, a theory <laughs> of black male. Yeah, I, I don't know what the fuck I just said, but black male privilege isn't a real thing. And, you know, to kind of push that line and try to make it. I know this is off topic, but I remember her little thing about black male privilege and how it was a so-called privilege that when black men were shot and killed by police we get put as the forefront of black uh police brutality like that was some type of honor or some type of fucking privilege it ain't a privilege you feel me and when we ride for uh rakeel uh boyd uh, or or uh what's the sister uh mcbride makita mcbride excuse me or Rakila boyd or sandra bland like we ride for them equally when we hear about the stories and you know, I, I just I, I don't really have too much, you know, respect for her in regards to just her stance on the black family in general. Uh, but I digress. We'll just jump into what she was talking about here. So, yes. To answer you, there are men who will get upset if you don't acknowledge their compliments. And those are fuck niggas, though. So we not really like I can't I can't account for those people. You feel me? Like for me, I can't I can't speak on what what's going through their mind when they do that. I can say that it's allegedly when people do those things, there's two sides of it. So you have a whole pickup artist community who actually teach men that they should use that as a tactic to get women. Like, they actually teach you, like, oh, you know, say something about how she ugly or, you know, she look a little fat in the dress or something like that. And these are mostly white pickup artists. This isn't, this isn't a, a, a black thing. That's why when I'm, I was scrolling through it, I was trying to see the little article you sent me. And I noticed some of the text messages. These were white women who were basically saying, you know, that the men were kind of, if you go through it, I mean, one was like, you know, a dude was like, I love your hair, and then dude, and she responded, oh, thank you, I do too, and then the dude was like, oh, be careful, don't make me like it less. Like, it was a joke, it was tongue-in-cheek, but, you know, that, that you wasn't... You think it was tongue-in-cheek? Yeah, that, that one in particular, yes, because she didn't even show the response that he had, and I, and I, and I imagine that he was like, like, really? Like, you, you gonna take that as serious? Because I was joking. Like, some of this stuff, I, I feel like, are mixing we're, we're mixing things in and we're taking things serious that aren't serious and then on another behalf we have yes there is a community of people who actually use that as a tactic to get women there's other people who they hate rejection and they'll they'll find a way to minimize somebody in their mind in order to to relieve that that feeling of of you know rejection so I mean, there, there's levels to it, but at the end of the day, I feel like this is kind of taking a step beyond because it's not an epidemic. It's not a bunch of men who were, you know, feeling the way that, oh, a woman made a compliment. Like, you know how I am. Shit, if you know I'm joking when I'm joking, I think. <laughs> I, I feel like you kind of know when I'm joking. So if I do make a statement like that, I'm, I'm 100% joking. I never feel like anybody should feel like they have to downplay what they feel about themselves for other people right and on top of that you know a lot of men who aren't they don't really have game like that they're going to use a compliment to a woman to get their foot in the door and so if you if you don't even really acknowledge them they feel slighted in a way 
you but you don't you don't you don't understand the notion of men's like to feel like they're building you up in some mm. way what do you mean like she her whole thing was if i it wasn't that okay what she was saying was if i'm complimented by you someone who i presumably don't know just met whatever and i agree with that there should be no reason for you to get mad and i feel like maybe people are experiencing where men are getting quote unquote mad at the agreement is because men like to feel like they're building you up like men like to feel uh, like they're adding to you even if it's not in a I, deep way I don't like agree. i made her feel special or oh i made her feel a way and if it's like when i respond and you see you didn't make me feel this way i thought this way before you open your mouth it's kind of like oh no, I disagree. I disagree. I don't feel like most men even feel like that. I feel like we're taking small groups of people and we're trying to make it the like she normally does, which is why I don't really fuck with her. You're taking a small group of people or, or small instances where these things happen and you want to make it the rule or the like the the whole thing with you know. And first off, there it, it 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 goes another way too because in some of these replies, it's like. Yeah, the way okay, yeah, he gave you a compliment, and then you kind of you kind of made it more disrespectful in a way because you kind of was like, "Oh, thanks," and without even really making an expression or really even saying anything. Okay, cool, whatever. But to try to like, I feel like in some instances there are some instances where if you compliment a woman, they will kind of look at you you know funny because uh, they get approached all the time and they used to niggas coming up to them sometimes they do get a little agitated and they say some you know that that is you know can be taken in a negative way so they get negativity back so it's not like you shouldn't be shocked if you have a negative feeling or a negative aura about yourself or you say so something her- negative oh, okay i'm all not right. saying that it's the woman's fault i'm saying Cause not not again in all cases it's not the, that's why I'm saying like when we when we're having this conversation we trying to make it seem like it's all one way and it's not there's many instances where one could be one person taking making a joke and you taking it the wrong way another situation could be you you know having a negative a negative response and that negativity coming back to you I'm not saying that that's always those two are the always the case but I'm saying that those are some of the cases that were thrown in the mix of this so you can't really say like oh it's just all men they have this type of problem or even a large amount of men because I don't know too many niggas who even coming up to women and complimenting them and them getting upset about them not saying nothing i've seen it happen but i don't hang with them i don't hang with those dudes and i don't know those type of dudes you know what i'm saying like it, it's something that you see happen but it's like it's mostly it's, it's usually lame type dudes anyway who do that so i mean you know it is what it is i'm not gonna really you know dwell on this shit too long because i feel like it's not really you know it's not it's not a real issue just like street harassment you feel me like yes there are instances you can take little instances of men going a little too far or going way too far when it comes to approaching women or or being aggressive in the way that they come at women but there's already laws in the books for some of these things and you know trying to create little you know campaigns and trying to get laws passed in order to you know basically help criminalize black men even further because that's what the law was going to end up doing i know i'm jumping into something else again but like this is one of the reasons why i don't really fuck with her as an individual like i'm not going to take her and then on top of that she got like i saw some little youtube video where she had like raising a black boy feminist like okay i don't have a problem with a black boy coming up saying I got to protect women and women should have all rights because I want my daughter to have equal rights too. I want my woman to have equal rights too, or equal footing in the economic structure. But I'm not finna like to go as far as to make it like, you know, fuck black men like or to just create an aura of like you have a certain disdain for black men. I'm not with that shit. I'm just not with it. And that's my rant. So uh, we're gonna jump into uh, we're gonna escape into another topic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, to, I, I don't know what what it is with escape. 
What? But you, because <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I'm gonna be honest. I really only listen to their biggest singles. I've never listened to an Escape album, so I don't know. You, you know. are missing. If you are a true hip hop, or I'm sorry, R and B before hip hop <laughs> head, then you are missing out by not having ever listened to a complete Escape album. What I would suggest is that you start with Traces of My Lipstick because that's the one that kind of made me a fan. Mm. But yes, I'm just so excited. Um, 80s Babies Worldwide are excited that Escape is coming back. A lot of people know Escape. I'm sorry, not Escape, but they know Candy from Housewives. They know Tiny as being tips, you know, ride or die baby mama. But us people of a certain age know them as the two singing as women, um, two of four women in Escape. And they recently announced that they are back together. They're actually headlining, I think, the Essence Fest, one of their um, nights. So, so I'm the Essence super, Fest. right. We need to go, but um, I'm just super hyped. Like you don't even understand. Like traces of my lipstick was like. I kind of felt like the album that helped me kind of come into my like womanhood and like, you know, really know how to feel about certain things. Like I just really, it has a special place in my heart as you can see. So I'm just hyped and I can't wait to see what music they put out. So, so, shout that's, out. <laughs> so that, that's one of the groups that you, you know, that you grew up on and you wish would make music today. Like that's, that's a group For that sure. if they drop the album this year, you will fuck with it. I would completely fuck with it and it would be in my favorites and I would listen to it at least once daily. Like anybody who follows me on Instagram and has for over like a year know like I'm big on putting like screenshots of whatever I'm listening to at the time and Escape is in regular rotation. So I'm definitely here for it. Okay. (laughs) I mean, I never looked at them like that, so I don't know, but. I no, mean, I you young, that. so I'm gonna let you have it. You know, it's cool, but let me be the one that brightens your R&B world with a little bit of okay. escape. I'll um, sing you some songs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> nah, I, I don't. You know, I don't know too much about them, so I can't say. But I would say if there was a R&B's group from the '90s that I wish was still popping or made like you know quality music still, it'd probably be Jodeci. Jodeci, yeah. really? Yeah, I look. They actually made recent albums, which is funny that you say you wish they yes, would. Yes, I know, but <laughs> I said equal quality. I didn't <laughs> made a comeback with equal quality. Um, right, I feel you. I mean, that's- oh no, no, no! I would say as far as groups too, Outcasts, of course. Like that, that's everybody. Uh, yeah, you know, comeback album. Like I, I want, I want to see that before I before I leave here. I want to see. I want to see an Outcast album. I want to see an album from uh, J Electronica. Like, even though I don't know if you would qualify that as a comeback, but he ain't dropped shit in so long. You know, except right. little songs here and there. So I guess a comeback too. I would. Lo- I would want. I wouldn't mind seeing a Bow Wow comeback album. You know what's coming? Uh, uh, no, no, <laughs> no, no. You know um, what's coming with the show you no. got. No, I would not mind Immature. I was a huge Immature fan. Batman was my man. I did go to his concert and he did put my god sister for Dara on stage and I was mad, but that's fine because I was too young. <laughs> but I wish Immature would come back. Immature made good music. Like if you think about some of those songs like Lover's Groove and like I Will Never Lie, they were like 12 years old singing these like grown mm-hmm. man ass songs. So I'm like, imagine what they could do now if they had the right producers and the Mar- right dynamic. Marquise Houston is kind of slept on. He always made some he, he made some good shit, man. I, I liked him. Right. And 112, don't sleep on 112. 112. 112 okay, well let, let let's 112 was cool. 112 was cool. I, I liked them, cool. but I, I feel like they, yeah, they, they not, it's not like they jagged edge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I put jagged edge ahead of them. Oh, extra in love ass, I guess. So, who else? Let's see. Um, oh, Total. How can I forget? Total. Kima Keisha Pam, that album. Oh, my God. I would definitely want a reunion. Now, one of the girls did die. RIP to her. But, like, a uh, total, I would definitely want to bring that group back if I did because that last album on Bad Boy did not get pushed the way it should have. I'm still mad Give that it DMX. didn't. 
DMX, Ja Rule, Jay Z. Give us that album. <laughs> We've been waiting on that album. I need that album. I could go for that. I could definitely go for that. So I guess um I kind of want to say genuine, but I feel like his old stuff still gives me what I need. And the last few projects haven't been that like impressive. So. Mm. But if I had to give myself a little short wish list of like '90s artists and groups, I think they would definitely be on it. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. but but speaking of because you know I brought up Bow Wow and you you seem to have Boo. disrespect Boo. for Bow Wow. <laughs> I don't know why. Boo. Yeah, shout out to shout out to Bow Weezy, Prince of the uh, of the Old Town, what? Uh, Prince of Atlanta, goddamn King of Atlanta. Uh, shout out to 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 Bow Wizzle, you feel me, for holding it down for so long. He has been at the top of the game for so long. Oh we don't forgot, you know what I'm saying. We don't forgot what his contributions to the game. We don't forgot that he put on Trey Songz. We don't forgot he done put on Chris Chris Brown. We don't forgot he put on Omarion. We forgot about Sierra. If you really want to talk about it, Bow Wow and Ray J. Are probably the two most unsung hip hop pioneers and R and B pioneers in the game. Y'all niggas don't really like to talk about them like that, but to be honest, they you really have it down in the two thousands. If you niggas really want, shit, no. get out of here. You yeah, really want to yeah. put it down like that, like Bow Bow Weezy and Ray J been giving the game fuckery for years, and y'all just not respecting it. And I need y'all to respect it. Who else? Who else was on the camera? Uh, you know, giving rants about Soldier Boy. You know, who else was on the 106 and Park uh, couches? You know, throwing up, uh, you know, the Terry. Old Town when he was in the A and throwing up the A when he was in the Old Town. Who, who else was doing that? I don't think so. But so, Bow, you know, Bow Wow, you know, recently he got caught up with the little with the little scandal. If you want to talk about it, we can talk about it, but it ain't nothing to me. To <laughs> Go ahead. It ain't nothing to you and the Bowers or fan club. Absolutely. So, <laughs> anyway, so everybody saw, you know, he got caught doing the ultimate flex, um, saying that he was, you know, headed to wherever on a private jet and somebody on the commercial flight that he was actually on snapped a picture in real time and was like, bruh, like, I'm right here. Like, you're lying. And of course, he followed up and tried to say people was trying to, like, make it out to be something it wasn't. But my favorite part of this whole entire thing is the Bow Wow Challenge. That is one of the best challenges that the internet has birthed in a long time. The Bow Wow Challenge was, first of all, people are, like, creative as fuck, because some of the shit, I really couldn't even figure it out until they showed you, like, you know, the other side of what was really happening, but the Bow Wow Challenge was glorious. Like, I'm kind of happy he fucked up just so I could see how creative people are. Like, the shit was hilarious. It seems like now, Bow Wow has one thing every year where people just clown him for it. And I don't understand why. Like, Bow Wow is just that dude. And we cannot talk about it. Like, it ain't true. Like, he was running the game in 2000. So, I mean, I don't understand it. But I'll let y'all have it. You I'll know let y'all what? have it. We gonna take it because shot Moss, like, shout out to Charlemagne again for making relevant ass points. Like, he spoke about how he thinks he's still that little bow wow wow yippee like Snoop's nephew. Like, he thinks he's silly. He think he's still on, like, the tour with all the hottest, like, yeah. guys of 2002 like that's not where we are like I think he wants to be back in that spot so bad like he thought he thinks he's like a G like I'm, he just his whole entire movement is a flex to me yeah, like he looks like is. a flex he acts like a flex like his music sucks like he dissed the girl Erica Mina on like the internet in front of everybody like it's levels to the fuckery that is shot Moss and I'm like not mad that he got caught out on his shit and it just sucks because he's like executive producer and I think growing up hip hop mm -hmm. Atlanta yeah. and it kind of probably for me maybe not kind of want to watch the show because it's like I don't want to see your lame ass on there like I, <laughs> if they show the you know like Tiny's daughter and Regine if they show them more than Bow Wow I'm on it but if Bow Wow I mean, is Bow like, Wow is the draw though Let, let's be honest he's to draw the show yeah to be honest, I feel like it's working against the show because people, these they kids, don't like 
the people, these kids between the age of like 18 and like, well, no, fuck that, like 13 and like 25, like those people don't care nothing about no bow wow. They think he the dude from like CSI Cyber or some shit. Like that, and like this dude who was on one of the park at one point, like they don't have that reverence and that respect for him. Like the people who's gonna be on that show that they see on their Instagram all the time and that they really feel a pop in, I feel like that's gonna be the pull. Like nobody cares about you, Shot Moss. Like, wow. go fall back and get your life because we're on, wow. we aren't here for you. We just we're just not. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll say this, man. All seriousness, um, yeah, it does seem like Bow Wow is kind of trying to relive the whole his whole moment in the, in the spotlight, and he hasn't really let it go or really realized that he's not that guy no more. Right. And I, I think he does realize it. It's more so that he doesn't want to come to terms with it. You know, and the whole little, and you see it with the shit he did at the restaurant where he trying to act like, oh, nobody noticed me yet. Or when he passing, you know, the kids like, oh. Nobody cared. I, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not that nobody cares. Like, if you recognize his Bow Wow, you're going to be like, oh, that's little Bow Wow. Like, but, I mean, he he's not somebody who, we all recognize he was somebody who was, He's what a hat. Call, yeah, a hat. No, he was an industry plant in the first place. Like he was created and cultivated. He wasn't writing his own shit. Not an know. industry plant. <laughs> he, <laughs> uh, he's an industry plant. Like he oh, motherfuckers shit. made and created him in, from the industry, and they created a star. And you know that's not to say that the man didn't put in work, because obviously when you're that young and you got to perform in front of people, it takes a lot of work. So I'm not gonna say he didn't work at all, but I'm saying, you know, we realize what it is. He he was a child star. He was a child hip hop star, and, and that's that's about it. And now he's a grown ass man. So in the yeah. words of Rev Run and some other people, you played yourself. Like I just can't. Like it's. It's it's done. It's over with. Like I, it's like he's trying to hold on to something that's not even a thing anymore. Like it's annoying at this point. It's been annoying. Like just and I think his ar- his arrogance with all of it is why people don't like him. It's, it it would be different if he was humble and people just really liked him. I think he would be in a whole different place if he never didn't come across like just like an asshole. Like a lot of people just don't like him because of his arrogance about everything. You know what well, I'm saying? So, Rihanna and Kendrick told you it's so hard to be humble. Maybe that's his struggle. <laughs> I don't I know. I guess, man. You know, but also, I, I mean, when you get that much so young, you know, you how, how much can you really tell somebody? You know what I'm saying? And that's a great point. Like, he's been popping since he was like literally at the waist of Snoop Dogg. Like, he was popping. He never got to go through that awkward teenage stage. Like, he was cute since he came on the scene. He always had girls screaming for him all until he actually became a real adult. And it's like when he actually was 21, 22, 23, that's kind of when shit started falling off. So it's almost like his life has been in reverse as compared to some pe- other people. You know what I mean? Where you may have been like lame as a child, but nobody even really knew you back then. So it don't count. And now you get your shit popping so we gonna believe whatever we see whereas for him we saw your decline and that's like some of the hardest shit to come up out of like once we look at you as a has-been it's the worst like it's so oh no you won't do that to him (laughs) but you know what and on that note i've been hearing some of the best lyrics out of wayne in a while and these features he's been doing they passed you no you must not have heard the features he's done most recently like he really has with some like heat I have. I've heard them. I've we're heard not gonna them. Put, you know what? We're not even going to put Wheezy and Bow Wow in the same conversation. I heard him, uh, first of all, I told my homie, the B.O.B. verse was one of his better verses in a while. Um, the verse what he did on Mad with on um, A Seat at the Table, that was by far his best verse in the longest. I ain't heard a better verse from Wayne in, since old, since 2010, maybe 2009, 2010. That was his best work in a very long time. I don't do his falling off. He's just not what he used to be. And you, I mean, okay, how can you? And, and he's one of those, he's another person like Bow Wow who no, just never grew no, up. No, 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 absolutely no. Not. Ain't no, no, you, you cannot compare him to Bow Wow in any way. You can't. No. 
No, he's you somebody. I, I will say this. I will say he. There was a moment where he was growing up, and it seemed like. And you, you look at interviews with people like Manny Fresh, who talk about his level of intelligence, and you can kind of go back to those old interviews and see where he was maturing, and it's like he regressed as he became bigger. He he started to regress mentally and become like a fucking child again. Like it's kind of embarrassing to watch. About I'm talking about Lil Wayne. Carter. No, you're not. Yes. I, 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 his okay. music because any conver- any inter- only a child that- only a child will get on fucking sixty minutes talking about I'm a blood miss Katie and throw up a gang and throw up his little rag that he ain't he wasn't even he wearing. Was back. He was high. He was high. He was high. Stop. Let, let's let's stop making excuses for Lil Wayne. We gonna stop doing that. The reality <laughs> is Wayne is falling off. Wayne acts like a fucking kid. He act like he don't he don't get the perspective of a lot of things. That's why he made a comments he mad about he made about Black Lives Matter to deal with that situation, saying, Oh, you know, I said that because, you know, uh the interviewer was saying something disrespectful about my daughter. Like it wouldn't even come to mind for me to say something about black folks or the movement. Even though I don't really even fuck with Black Lives Matter matter of a movement, I would say what? for him to yeah, it, it, I mean, so the move, another- <laughs> yeah, we're we gonna do another show on that. Like, the people behind that movement is something different than the, the, the sentiment that's behind it is different than the actual movement. But I'm saying with Lil Wayne, like, it, it's apparent, like, he just don't deal with things in a grown up manner, he, he lacks perspective on a lot of things. So, really? and, and you can kind of tell in his music, like, where has he progressed, except from you know, he, he talks about pussy money, weed. Okay, hey, where's hey. the progression though? Like he don't really talk about nothing outside of that no more. Yes, his music does. has regressed with his mental. You know what? Like I said before, the man gave us heat on heat on heat on heat on heat for like years straight, like consistent and progressive heat. I feel like his catalog. What was the music about? Everything. Yes, no, no, it no, was no, 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 no. See, this is what well, we get into. These. Yes, it was about PMW. Okay, that was a lot of it. Thank you. But, and punchlines, random punchlines. A lot about PMW. But my point I'm making is like the beast of a rapper that he was and still yeah. has the potential to be. Not he potential. gave so much content that I feel like it can't be taken from him this easily. Like not this quickly. Like I feel like he gets to kind of like. Just talk about fun shit at some point because he already gave you bar on bar on bar about everything you can think what, of. Bro? Now he to have fun. He talks about everything. You want to pull out all the like mixtapes? Like look, he talks about everything. No, no, no. You're talking about old Wayne. Like if you're talking about Let's talk about Wayne Carter, the artist. Carter Wayne, one, Carter. Artist. I would say at well, it stopped at Carter two when it comes to content and substance. <laughs> it stopped at Carter two. Like you right. don't rap about nothing from Carter two on. He ain't been rapping about nothing since. Like, if you okay. can really just really dissect his music, it's all punchlines about pussy money, weed, and different, you know, trending topics throughout the time that was okay. popping around that time, which is what whatever. That's what cool. Else? But, you know, if you can't compare his legacy to a Jay-Z who been giving, like, game okay, food no, for thought for the longest, that. like, you can't we're do not, that. We're not doing that. We're not comparing him to the greats. We're just talking about Weezy as an artist, mm-hmm. and you are saying he's fine. On and off, we're not comparing him to a great. We're just saying, has he fallen off or yeah. has he not? And yeah. I feel like you trying to compare him to Bow Wow is disrespectful as fuck, <laughs> and that's all I got to say. No, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to compare them, them musically. I'm not saying musically. Yeah, it's no not even comparison. a. It's and not even a comparison. You right? It's not a comparison because I don't think anybody's out so. Bow Wow at a young age, so we're not gonna make that comparison to Bow Wow uh-huh. Lil Wayne. Okay. We're not gonna do that and do that and disrespect Bow Wow like that. But anyway, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. But uh, I, I, you know, I appreciate you, you know, for even entertaining this. This is, this was an experiment that went kind of well. I don't mind this. Like maybe we can, we can next time get, you know, see when he out of town. We can get him on the line with us. Maybe we can get Ro on the line with us as well in the future. But you know, th- this went, this went well. I appreciate your your efforts here. Again, you know, back talk. Back Talk Podcast, BackTalkMedia.com, uh, at Backtalk Media on Instagram. We have a Facebook page, so folks can like our page. Where can they find us on Facebook? On Facebook, it's going to be Backtalk Media as well. Um, on 
iTunes, search Back Talk Podcast. You'll you'll find this man. Just B A K No C A L K. No C in the back talk. <laughs> exactly. Know. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's been it's been incredible. Uh and you can find you can find myself on Instagram, Ray Ban. R E I damn, I just fucked up my own name. R H E A B A N. <laughs> you can find C Rich on uh Instagram, C Rich Productions underscore. Right. Uh you can Jero- find Rose. Oh no, Jeroz. <laughs> <laughs> Roe's, uh, that's R E A U X I S. That's too fucking much to explain, man. God damn! I'm just gonna throw everything into the description box. Yeah, uh, just again, Red Band. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back talk, man. We here. And, and I'm sorry, Lake. Go ahead. Shout your shout your shit out. Ain't that the shot, bro? <laughs> no, this way I am on Instagram, K Foria, K A E P H O R I A, K Foria. I'm also on Twitter. Yes, my pages are locked, but I would love to hear from you guys, add you guys. So just send me a request. You know, I got to keep Feds out, so my page locked, but definitely hit me up. Feds watching. <laughs> All right, is that it for this week, uh, Ray Ban? It is, man. Thank y'all again for tuning in. Bad Talk, Episode 5. We Thank signing you. out.